so we uh, uh, first do a short introduction about phylogeny and then we move on to do the lab. So this is uh, hopefully entertaining. <laughs> so phylogeny, uh, it turned out uh, this is a Greek word. Uh, phylon means I can mean tribe, uh, orange or something. And, uh, in, in uh, biology, usually phylogeny uh, is based on the molecular sequences, they say DNA sequences or protein sequences. Uh, well, uh, basically phylogeny is tree, except the tree is not upward, it's usually downward or sideward in uh, phylogeny. And here's a basic uh, example of phylogeny, where what this means, uh, Assuming there are some uh, DNA sequence, we can, based on the sequence, we can generate a tree. Usually, it goes downwards. And gorilla, chimpanzee, and a human. So, what this tree means, uh, it starts from some uh, common ancestor one, and then uh, branch out. Uh, uh, good phylogenetic tree is always bifurcating. If there is a tree is trifurcating or even more than that, that, that often is called an unresolved tree. So the basic assumption of the uh, phylogeny is always bifurcating. And so in this case, uh, you have three nodes, the leaf nodes. So this tree is going downwards. At the bottom of those are called leaf. So they are also called leaf nodes. So and one of these will be called a clay. That's uh, several branch all together. That's called a clade, and these two are in one clade and next to each other. So these two will be closer than the other one. So basically, chimpanzee and human will, based on this tree, will be closer than gorilla based on this tree. You call them clade. Clade, C L A D E. Clade. Yeah. So. And. Okay, so how to read the phylogenetic tree? The not, usually the tree is either downward or sideward. When we present a tree, very often in the paper you read it from left to right. If you read from left to right, it depends on how the tree presents. If it presented a vertical, uh, there are straight lines here. Those are actually not considered as a distance. Those vertical lines are not are not part of the distance you will calculate. If I ask you the distance between one and five, how do you calculate the distance? Four. Uh, okay, let me let me pull up. Uh, pull this up. Let's say this is a unit. This is one. Distance one. This is another one. This is another one. The distance between uh, number one and number five. Three, three, four. Is that three? Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is one unit, another unit, another unit. <coughs> the distance between one and five. How long is the distance between one and five? Three. Uh, I'll give you a choice. Oh, I, I didn't do a click of it. Let's say just count the number three. B, four, C, five. E six. So how many vote for three? Six. I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, eight. Okay, eight people. Four. Wait, you can't vote twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was holding them for four. Okay, I see four. Okay, I see two. Five. No one. Six. I tell you, six is the correct one. Oh, I see one. <laughs> the six is the correct one. Why? So why is it six? Why is it six? Well, you need to count this distance too, right? It's <coughs> you, 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 you go from here and here. That's right. So one, two, three, one, two, three is symmetric, right? So it's three plus three. That's six. That's yeah, but the, the distance here does not count. Okay. That's just too far visual visualization. The distance in this direction does not count the distance. Right. So basically. The distance between one and five is this length plus this length. And if they are the 
this is called, uh, uh, I forgot the term, ultra-magic tree. So the distance, they should be always the same if it is this presented. So you can just measure this length as times two, that should be the distance. Right. So the distance between the three and four will be? Between uh, one, two, two, five, two, yeah. two, two. Uh, one. Between three and four will be just this one. plus this. Two, two, two. Right. That's just two. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, okay, the distance between one and four will be? One, two, uh, one four. and four. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two, three. Yeah. So, what's the difference between the left tree and the right tree? Uh, is that a different tree? It, they look like very similar. They are similar. Is that a different tree? Uh, it is a different tree because look at this tree. One is closer to two. So one and two is closer to each other. In this tree, one is closer to number three. So this is tell you a com uh, well, not com a different story. Right? So in this one species one is closer to species two. In this one species one is closer to species three. And this one four and two are closer. This one three and four are closer. The number of five is always outside. That's often called the outer group. <coughs> this is something we often call the outer group. The why it's called it's almost like an external reviewer just to provide a uh, outside opinion on it, on everything inside. Out the group. Okay. Uh, basically, the tree is a reading <laughs> side word. Okay. All right. So why phylogeny? Uh, it's actually uh, uh, it, it's a useful uh, practical skill too. So this is uh, happened probably in the year when the well, probably the slide when the SARS is still uh, in the news. Uh, I guess nowadays Ebola, but maybe. <laughs> yeah. But this year it's Ebola. <laughs> so, but uh, so in any case, uh, one year there is a SARS outbreak in Hong Kong, East Asia, and also around the globe. So how do we know it's the, the virus is spread. So we know the timeline. Uh, so, so in fall 2012, there are about 300 cases in the southern east, southeastern part of China. And then, unfortunately, the, the physician traveled to an international meeting in Hong Kong and stay at a hotel, entire floor. Uh, every guest in the entire floor then uh, are unfortunately pass on the viruses and then the, since it's a vacation spot people spread out to the rest of the world so <laughs> yeah, that's and how do we know that's the case I mean it looks like that's the pattern but how do we know uh, that is actually the case and, and this is actually that hotel uh, I guess the name is somehow uh, uh, try to hide <laughs> That's, uh, I think the A is that tradition, uh, and then those are the rest of the guests, and they spread out into the rest uh, of the world, and then they pass it on to those uh, caregiver again, and the different hospitals. This is virus. This is virus. Oh, uh, I think it's, I think it's like a in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah air. Oh. Okay, how do we know that? We basically isolate, uh, isolate those viruses from various patients, we know the date, and then we build a phylogeny, uh, phylogeny of it. Uh, in fact, uh, here, that's the physicians, the, that the virus isolated from that physician. Uh, and then you have one isolated by Hong uh, Oh, that, that's in uh, December 16, 2022. 
last uh, February 21st, 03. Right, so, uh, so the virus here, first here, and then here, and then Hong Kong, Toronto, Taiwan, Hanoi, Singapore, Brazil, they're all here. So, so what, what this means, uh, if, we, if we, without all the rest of the information, we, we basically say there is an ancestral part, ancestral virus here, and then uh, this ancestral virus came to the one in uh, southern east, south, southeastern China, and then to Hong Kong, and Toronto, Taiwan, Hanoi, Singapore, they all come from this part. Right. So basically that's what, and you can actually date at the time. Uh, right, so uh, fall, 2012, spring, March, uh, February, March, late February, March, yeah, so I, I don't have the date for the front, but it's probably also March or even later. Yeah. So basically that's how, uh, we can use the phylogeny to even understand how disease spread. That's a clear, well, the very, uh, I guess, clear cut uh, example. In fact, in town, people also collect uh, the uh, travel itinerary of those guests and they know when they fly off to the rest of the world. So that's a, uh, this, this one is actually uh, one of the real case we, we can pinpoint where the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, uh, well the real case we can pinpoint the, the origin of the uh, infectious disease. Uh, okay, so here's a, a some simple example, uh, let's, how do we build a phylogenetic tree? So here are four sequences. Spelman is at Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Spelman is at Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, that's the original sequences. The second sequence is Spelman is at an uh, It's supposed to... Oh, right now there are four sequences. They are exactly the same. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then I introduced a little bit of mutation. Since uh, oh, okay. assuming the viruses start, this sequence is going to change, mutate. Then there's a, a little bit of mutation now. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, that's... And then we are going to build a phylogeny for this one, two, three, four. How do we know? Uh, first, we first we 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 count the, the difference among all those sequences. Right? So so here we so we have four sequences. So between. Between the first and the second, there is two, two difference. Right, so this uh, L are different. Uh, so between first and second, this this is different. L, this L. So there are two. Right, so uh, two differences. Okay. And uh, between first and third, uh, what, uh, three. Right? <coughs> and fourth and fourth also three. three. And basically we'll do this. And in all possible combinations we'll do this. And this is something we call a distance matrix. So basically there's a distance. Uh, the distance between me and myself is zero. <laughs> so, so all diagonals should be zero, but off diagonal there are some distance. Those are pairwise distance. This is called a distance. Matrix, and from this distant matrix, we can generate a phylogenetic, a phylogenetic genetic tree. So how do we do that? Uh, so, you think about uh, with, in fact, with uh, we can just put. So, based on the distance, which pair are close? It is the closest pair. One and two. One and two, yeah. So, so we know one and two should be a pair. Right? And actually, by knowing this, three and four must be a pair. 
and then we move a trigger to look like this. That's basically it. <laughs> In fact, by simple logic, you can find out the main topology of this tree. It, you, you can try, there's no other way to put this tree. Yeah. Once you know one and two, three and four are already decided. So <laughs> that, that's actually already decided, the topology. Uh, sometimes you will also see something like this. Uh, three and four. That basically is smoothing the three and four to a different places. Uh, if the tree look like this, so that's the tree. Uh, on the top, the tree look like this. One, two, three, four. Right. That's right now the tree look like this. But if I draw the tree like this, one, two, three, and four. They actually they have exactly the same topology. And I can I can smooth this out, right? And then I can uh, pull this and uh, uh, stretch this this line, stretch, 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 <laughs> and then I put this one out. Um. Yeah, I can stretch, <laughs> right? And then I can put this one back just like this. Yeah, exactly. If you if you picture this as a cradle, you can I can play around. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I probably should bring a play though. <laughs> I've got to do it. But anyhow, mm -hmm. that's basically, so based on the distance, we can actually know, uh, calculate the tree. But there are a computer to do this. Uh, but you can also visually tell sometimes which tree should be correct. OK, so and here's a more, uh, another example to explain what is a distance matrix. And this is real distance matrix, so among four cities. In this case, instead of uh, four species, we are just using four, four uh, locations. So Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, Knoxville. And those are the, the, the number of hours driving from Atlanta to, from each one city to uh, another city. Right? So two hour, two hour, two hour, two and a half hour with Chattanooga. And then you can convert that into a distance matrix. And the question, uh, how about you take a piece of paper, try to draw a tree? Uh, <laughs> this is a group of science and I think. <laughs> uh, I'm actually interested to see what kind of tree you would draw. Uh, uh, yeah, this, this is a group uh, project. I can't discuss, but you, I guess you need to submit the one piece of paper with your name. Yeah. Yeah, I can put all of them. All the posts. All the posts. Wait, what do you mean? Anybody even all the posts? I forgot to video. Okay, so. So. Uh, basically, you are going to have a tree like this, right? Uh, and basically, which city are going to put? Um, yeah. So the first, the first Atlanta, 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 Atlanta and Birmingham, and Nashville. So Birmingham. Oh, uh, this is. I'm, I'm only talking about the four city at the end, not Chattanooga, Atlanta, Knoxville, Nashville, Birmingham. So, which city would you put? Right. You said which one are you talking yeah. about? So, Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, Nashville. How are you going to put on this tree? So, Atlanta is going to be like 2.5. What's 2.5? Birmingham. That's the distance, right? Uh, from Birmingham to Knoxville, it's 2.5. The distance is 2.5. Yeah, but I'm saying like in the files in the tree. Oh, boy. Oh. How would I put the 0.5? Uh, oh, uh, the tree actually probably does not represent the distance no. precisely. Okay. It's an overall representation. It's what they call optimal. Uh, 
It's not a precise representation of the image. So the, the idea is basically you're going to have a, a pair of city with another pair of city. And basically, what I can do put here. Yeah. It's in the right order. So I'm looking at the, what's the smaller the distance here? <coughs> two and a half. Yeah, two and one. And which pair is this? Berlin and Birmingham. Birmingham and Atlanta. So I'm going to put Atlanta and Birmingham. Yeah, Atlanta and the Birmingham. And uh, then the other two are already decided. Yeah. 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 So basically that's it. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically, once you put a land uh, burning hand there, the natural doctor will be automatically decided. And, okay, now if we if go back to the, the original example, it's basically the same thing. Based on the distant matrix, we can also decide a, a tree among species. Uh, making sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so now let's apply it to solve a real world problem. Who, who is the closest living relative to the giant panda? Uh, so that's a giant panda. Uh, what is this? The uh, black bear. Yeah, Asian black bear. Uh, what is this? I don't know what that is. That's called red red panda. A red panda. A red panda. Uh, that's a brown bear. What is this? What is that? That's the uh, funny looking bear in South America. Uh, what is this? A uh, grizzly. That's actually a bear they found out in Alaska, frozen in Alaska a long time ago. Frozen. Yeah, it's a it's an extinct uh, species. Oh, that's a cartoon picture. Yeah, and so it, 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 it's oh, they, they can actually it's a DNA from a frozen oh, sample. Okay, so how do we how do we know this turned out to be a big deal? Uh, thirty years ago. Yeah, in nineteen eighty five, this is actually a Nature paper. Someone uh, sequenced all the mitochondrial uh, DNA sequences from different uh, species. That's uh, brown bear, black bear, sun bear. The South American funny looking bear is called spectacular bear. Uh, giant panda, uh, red panda, raccoon. Uh, so, so they sequence all this, then build a phylogenetic tree, and then they, what's their conclusion? What's the conclusion? Um, the brown bear is the closest one. Yeah, this, no, this way. What's closest to the wood? The giant panda. Oh, the giant panda. Yeah, so oh, giant panda is the bear. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so the conclusion of the giant panda is, is actually a, a, a relative of a bear, not those uh, red panda or a bear. So despite their, uh, 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 I don't know, resemblance to red panda or other things, uh, it's actually a bear, so that's the conclusion. So we, uh, we can actually also do this uh, fairly easily nowadays. Uh, let me see. So, oh, let me see whether I can get the sequence. So, meanwhile, let me uh, give you the last menu. So, So first you should all, uh, download a software called Mecca. DNA of various uh, species, including a giant panda. 
So in my case, I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to just copy this. And then go back to uh, one website. Uh, This is really a toy version of the phylogenetic. We are actually not going to use this for the lab, but that's for the for the demo. It's okay. So. so on the Moodle, they just be a. Uh, Okay, so what is the login? So, there. So that's uh, actually uh, we generate the phylogenetic tree for the giant panda using 16S uh, <coughs> mitochondria DNA. So red panda is the outgroup. Giant panda is here. Asian black bear, Asian sun bear, brown bear, uh, short faced. Uh, oh, that's a extinct uh, Ala a bear in Alaska. Spectacular bear from the South America. So there, but. And then, if, if I ask you the question again, which species is the closest the living relative to giant bear, giant panda? Which one is? Um, Asian one? No. Where is the giant panda? The, the which place. species is the closest the living Asian. relative to the giant panda? Which one is? The, 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 oh, okay. Asian one. It's, yeah, but all that group. Brown bear, Asian. The closest, it should be just one answer, right? The brown bear. The Asian black bear. The brown bear. The brown bear? No, the brown bear is here, right? The distance between is this, and this is certainly further away from those. The red panda, this one with the giant panda is this, this, this. It's the longest. So Asian black bear. Asian black bear. Is it Asian? I thought the Asian sun bear was You seen it? So, so the distance, uh, distance between the uh, uh, giant panda and the red panda is this. That's uh, really the longest. The distance between Asian black bear is this, uh, this, and this. That's shorter. Now, do the Asian sun bear? Asian sun bear will be this. It's even is longer. It so, so it's the Asian black bear. Mm -hmm. Brown bear. Is it? The brown bear is also here. Right, that's shorter. Right. Are, are they? Wait. They are not the shortest one, longer. though. The, the, short 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 the shortest, no. the closest living relative, you should have the, the shortest short distance. Oh. The short face bear? The short face bear. Uh, that one is indeed the, the shortest distance, but that's an extinct. That's already dead. So the speckled bear? Yeah, so it's only the so speckled bear. So the speckled bear is still alive. Yeah. The cracker is this one. How do you know it's extinct? I thought that was extinct too. But how do you know it's an Can what? you explain that again? How do we know it's extinct? So uh, are you going to tell us which one is extinct? Yeah. This way, this way, is, uh, is, is a species that doesn't even exist anymore. Okay. So how do we know? So I'm asking what's the closest living relative. Because he told us. Uh, so it's the, oh, okay. the closest living relative is <laughs> right. the speckled. That way it's still existing in South Africa. Because it has the shortest distance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. 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 So I guess 
to the, yeah, it's really not hard anymore to do phylogeny. So basically, the, who is the closer living uh, relative of the transgender? It's the... Yeah, it's a short-faced, uh, I mean, a spectacle bear from South America. It's not good. So, I guess 30 years ago, a nature paper nowadays is just uh, a few click away. <laughs> it's not a big deal anymore. <laughs> so, okay.